I'm back and today I will show you four advanced text effects that will make you go viral. Let's go! Before we start, my composition size will be 1080 by 1080 with 60 frames per second. And animation number one is this rotating letter fade in. As you can see, I prepared a clip of Dexter Morgan and the first step is going to be duplicating our text layer. So select your text layer and press Ctrl and D. This is going to be an advanced tutorial, so I'm not going to show you how to create a text. For that, you should watch a different video. And the first step for this animation is going to be duplicating our text layer. So just select it and then press Ctrl and D. Now what we want to do is separate each line into a different text layer. So for my top text layer, I'm going to select the bottom line and delete it. And then for the bottom text layer, I'm going to delete the top line. What that will do is now separate each line into a different layer, which means we can add individual animations. Our base for the animation we want to create is going to be the slow fade on effect. So go to effects and presets and search for slow fade on. Drag this on both of your text layers and then adjust the keyframes to the talking speed of your character. Once we've got the main animation done, we're going to get into the interesting part. And for that, we're only going to select the text layer that we want to have appear in this rotating effect. I only want the second line to fade up like this. So this is the layer I'm going to select. And then I'm going to bring up my entire text menu. And for my first animator, which is just the slow fade on effect, I'm going to add a property for position right here. The value you put here is going to be dependent on how much you want your characters to move. I want them to come from the bottom and just a slight bit. So I'm going to set the second value on the right side to 25, which as you can see, will move the Y position downwards. You can see the animation itself doesn't look really smooth. So next we're going to open up the advanced section, scroll down and put the ease high amount from 100 down to zero. And then the ease low amount from zero to 100. 100%. To make this fading up animation look random, we're also going to check the randomizer. And depending on which random look you like, you can change the seed. In my case, I like to go for 48. As you can see, we have this random position done. Next up, we want to animate our rotation. So I'm going to move all the way up, click on animate, and then select the rotation. Make sure you actually create a second animator. And in here, I'm also going to add wiggly from selector and then wiggly. First of all, to set the rotation, I'm going to put the rotation value from 0 to 20. The higher you go here, the more rotation you will have. And then because the wiggly effect will make it move so randomly, we're going to open up that one as well. And inside of the wiggle settings, we're going to put it from 2 down to 0 0.1. So we only have very slight movement. And here I like to use the random seed 57. Also, I'm going to put my max amount from 100 down to 40%. And now looking at it, I'm going to reduce my rotation by a little bit from 20 down to 16. The problem we'll have now is once our animation finishes, our letters will still be too rotated. And to actually make that look a bit better, we're going to go to the beginning right before our text is even visible and set a keyframe for the rotation amount. Leave this at 16. And then we're going to go to the end of our text layer which you can see is supposed to be right here and then put it down to something like six. The reason why you don't want to put zero is because then the characters will be completely straight and I want to keep my letters just a tiny bit rotated. To bring some more motion into the whole thing, we're going to add some increased tracking, but it's not going to be the normal way. We're going to select our text layer, then go to effects and presets and search for increased tracking. Drag it on top of this first adjustment layer and then press U to bring up the keyframes. You can see the ones at the very bottom are for the increased tracking and instead of starting at zero, we actually want to start at something like 25, which will make our letters spread out a lot. Then at the second keyframe, where the standard value is set to 40, we're going to put it down to something like 8. Now I'm going to stretch this keyframe out all the way to the end where our other position keyframe is also located. And then I'm going to select both the keyframes to open the graph editor. The graph we want to use is the following. Click onto the top handle and then drag it down like so. For the bottom one, we're just going to go a bit towards that direction as well. And if you want, you can also make this a tiny bit faster. Once that's done, you can see the animation is already starting to look a lot better. But to fit it up with our first text line, we're also going to apply increased tracking on there. So just select the keyframes, press Ctrl and C, go to the beginning of the first text layer and then paste the keyframes by pressing Ctrl and V. As you can see, the animation already matches up a lot better, which brings us to effect number two, and that's going to be this nice red texture on top of our text. Before we start, make sure you also enable motion blur for both of these layers, and now we can collapse the keyframes by just pressing U. And the first effect we want to add to the text layer is called Fractal Noise. Go to effects and presets and search for Fractal Noise. Select the normal one and drag it onto the text layer that you want your texture to be on. Inside of the settings, put the contrast to 230 and the brightness from zero down to negative 10. Open up the transform and put the scale from 100 up to 160%. Next effect is going to be S underscore emboss shiny. And if you can't find this effect inside of your after effects, join my discord server. Make sure you drag this underneath of the fractal noise effect. And you can see our texture already looks a lot cooler. We're not done yet though. First of all, make sure you put the bump smooth from 2.4 down to 2 and then put the highlight size from 0.5 to 1.2. To bring in some color, we're going to search CC boner and again drag it onto our text layer. Now the color you choose is completely up to you. I want to go for a nice red because it fits the word, which is why I'm going to select the midtones color by clicking onto the square and then selecting the color that I want to use. In my case, this nice red effect. Press onto OK. And the last effect that is pretty underrated is called BBC Race Puffy. Also drag this one onto your text layer. And first of all, we have to make sure we center it to our text. Doing that is pretty simple. Just look at where your text is and then drag this light source into the center of your text. That will make sure the rays go into the right direction. If you zoom in, you can see they're kind of orange and we want them to obviously fit with our red text. So I'm going to click on where it says current and then load the red color 
color preset by just clicking on reds. As you can see, that will turn the rays red. But if you want them in a different color, you can see there's lots of different presets. Then you also want to make sure to put the intensity from 125 to 140 and the rays length from 50 down to 10. Do some final adjustments to your text if you want to. You can move it kind of to overlap the first text line. And then the mistake a lot of people make is now just applying their normal text effects. What we actually want to do is select both the text layers, right click, go to pre-compose, enable this bottom option and this check mark and then press on to OK. Now once we have pre-composed them, we can go to effects and presets and apply our normal text effects. In my case, I'm going to start with bevel alpha, just drag this onto the pre-composition. Then I'm going to search for deep glow, also drag it on the pre-composition and put the exposure to 0.2. Then I'm going to add S underscore drop shadow, put the shadow blur down to zero and put both the shift to 2.32. Then I'm going to add another drop shadow, but this time the normal one. I'm going to put the opacity to 100, the distance to zero and the softness to 100. Last but not least, I'm going to search for S underscore warp chroma, drag it all the way to the bottom, put the Z distance to 0.8 and the warp amount to 0.2. Make sure you combine this with a nice shake and blur. I also made a tutorial on that in the top right corner and this is by far one of my favorite text effects because it looks amazing. From here it only gets better because number three is going to be this nice shape frame. This time I have a new clip of Joe Goldberg and again like before our base animation for this is going to be slow fade on so just drag it on your text layer and then make sure you adjust the keyframes to your character's talking speed. What I like to do here is actually open up the text settings and then just add a slight blur by clicking on add, property, selecting blur and just putting the value up to two. When our characters are appearing that will just blur them a little bit which I think looks pretty good. To now get to the frame animation we first of all have to make sure we keep the right proportions. You don't want to look like a goofy R cap cut editor so go to your grid options and enable the normal grid. Then select the pen tool from the top, disable the fill, put the stroke size to two and select the color that you want your shape to be in. Then we can go ahead and zoom onto our text to now create the shape that we want to use. This is going to be the most creative part because you can literally choose whatever you want. It could be a line animation, it can be a frame. Just do what you think looks best. In my case I want to do these two frames so I'm going to orientate off these blocks right here. I'm going to start on this block and then I'm going to go all the way to the left. Make sure the line is straight and that's why we kind of want to use the grid so we can keep track of our line is straight and then I'm also going to go downwards like this about half the way. I'm going to slightly reposition it like this and now to add our animation because we don't just want to have it pop in we're going to go to add and then select trim paths. Go to where you want this frame to start popping in then open the trim path sections and set a keyframe for the start and end value. The start we're going to put from 0 up to 50 and also the end we're going to put down to 50. That should completely make our line disappear and then we can go ahead a few frames and reset the start from 50 back down to zero and the end from 50 back up to 100%. As you can see, our line will fade up from the middle and I'm going to select both the keyframes, right click, go to keyframe assistant and easy ease. Now we're going to duplicate this layer once by pressing control and D and for the bottom one, we kind of wanted to come flying in from the top left. So I'm going to go to where it's supposed to start, press P on my keyboard, right click and then separate the dimensions, set a keyframe for both, then drag these two keyframes a few frames ahead to where we want this animation to be over. And now we can just drag the shape layer to the top left and it will automatically animate inwards as you can see right here. The reason why we duplicated it is because we want the same thing in the bottom right. So now I'm going to drag this shape layer to the bottom right, then right click, go to transform and select flip horizontally. One more time, I'm going to right click, transform and then also flip vertically. We want to make sure that we kind of position this in the same way that we positioned the first one. And then we're going to do the same process. Press P on your keyboard, separate the dimensions and set two keyframes at the end where the animation is supposed to be over. Then go to the start of the animation right here and just move your shape layer downwards. So we'll create the keyframes for you and animate the whole thing. Just make sure both the layers approximately have the same distance from the starting point to the end point. Again, select all the keyframes, right click, go to keyframe assistant and easy ease. Of course, we also want to enable motion blur for all of these layers. And similar to before, to actually apply our effects, we're going to have to pre-compose them again. Before we do that though, make sure you disable your grid because we no longer need it. And then select all of the shape layers, including your text and pre-compose them together like so. We want to apply the exact same effects that we used for the texture earlier. With the only changes being inside of the deep glow, we want to open up the tint section, enable the tint and I want to go for a light blue, so I'm going to select a light blue like this, press on to OK, and then put the mix down from 100 to 60%. Then I'm also going to add one more effect instead of effects and presets, search for S underscore warp fish eye and drag it onto your pre-composition. Put the amount from 1 up to 2.5 and then the Z distance from 1 up to 3. As you can see, we will get all of these text layers and to get rid of them, we're just going to put the warp X to no and then also the warp Y to no. If you want less warp, you can also put the amount more down and then you have this amazing framing animation for your text layer. Like I said, 
said, you can be extremely creative with this. So try around and find what you like most. The next effect and my personal favorite is going to be this pixelating fade out glitch. Before we do that, the most important step is going to be adding a good color correction. I never edit without using a color correction because it will literally boost the quality of your edits immensely. If you now want to get my exact color correction that I use to make my edits look the best as possible and go viral, make sure you check the first link in the description because I'm still running a huge sale in my shop. On top of that, I recently added four new textures to my editing bundle. So if you want to upgrade your edits with just one click, make sure you check it out. Creating this is pretty straightforward. You just want to make sure you have a text ready. And I'm going to use the exact same text settings we used in the previous few texts. Then go to effects and presets and search for S underscore Y pixelate. What's important is that you drag this at the very top of your effects list on your pre-composition. So don't just drag it on the layer and put it at the bottom, but make sure it's above all of the other effects. Start by putting the edging width down to 400, the pixel frequency to 100, and the chunky up to 0.75. Then move your time indicator to where you want the fading out animation to start and set a keyframe for the Y percentage. Go to the end where you want this animation to be finished and just put it up to 100%. And just like that, you created this amazing pixelating out animation. If you want to get access to all of my After Effects courses from beginner all the way to professional, make sure you check the second link in the description because for a limited time only, you can still join my school community and get a free preset pack on top. In there, I have over 200 full length lessons and you get 15 live calls every single month with me. You can also DM me and ask me questions in your editing progress at any time. So if you want to take editing more seriously, check it out. With that being said, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. I would really appreciate that. Check out this video next if you want to learn how to make this glitching text animation. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.